In order to put life into an ailing franchise, developers can't just toss out a decent game, they have to go big or go home. They need to invest all their time and effort into making the best darn video game possible, which makes it unfortunate when things don't quite pan out. I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com and here are 10 video games that made expensive comebacks and still failed. Number 10, Shaq Fu Legend Reborn. I'm not going to ask the question, did anyone enjoy Shaq Fu? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. The 2D fighting title is now renowned for its unpolished and tedious gameplay. And really, who thought it was marketable to have NBA superstar Shaquille O'Neal star in a game where he fights monsters instead of, you know, plays basketball? Shaq Fu isn't just bad, it's proof that slapping a celebrity's name on a crappy product doesn't improve its quality. But when a crowdfunding campaign for Shaq Fu, a legend reborn, was set up several decades later in 2014, the gaming community seemed to suffer collective amnesia, or at least think it was funny, to back a project, financing a follow-up to an infamous dud. Even though this reboot reached its funding goal, trouble started brewing immediately. Due to licensing fees, a Legend Reborn suffered massive delays. When multiple ports were cancelled, it was obvious how this needless beat-em-up was going to turn out. Sure enough, every version of a Legend Reborn received scathing reviews ranging from 35 to 54% on Metacritic. Due to its offensive stereotypes, simplistic combat and shameful brevity, Shaq Fu A Legend Reborn is arguably as bad or worse than its predecessor. Number 9, Turok. In the late 90s, GoldenEye was the top dog when it came to first-person shooters on the N64. However, the Turok games weren't far behind. The dino-battling sci-fi saga received consistent praise for its elaborate level design, focus on atmosphere, and the fact the weapons could suck the brains out of your enemies. But when the franchise had a slew of duds, it felt like a reboot was needed. 2016's Turok was developed by Propaganda Games, best known for well, nothing at the time, but everybody has to start somewhere. But apart from the graphics, this incarnation of Turok doesn't have much going for it. The aim assist is inconsistent, to the point where it's borderline useless. The glitches are so rampant it's difficult for the Native American hero to perform basic tasks. Most importantly, the whole game comes across as bland. Compared to other shooters released at the same time like Bioshock and Halo 3, Turok feels prehistoric and not in a good way. Even though Turok sold marginally well, it wasn't enough to revitalise the brand, causing the proposed sequel to be cancelled. And when Propaganda Games closed shop, Turok fittingly went the way of the dinosaurs. Number 8, Mighty Number no. 9. After Capcom cancelled multiple Mega Man projects, the brains behind the super fighting robot Keiji Inafune took matters into his own hands. Leaving the company, Inafune set up a Kickstarter to fund a spiritual successor of Mega Man called Mighty Number no. 9. Thanks to the Blue Bomber's loyal fanbase, Inafune reached his goal in two days. When the campaign quadrupled its initial target, things were looking up for Mr. Number no. 9. Sadly, most of the hype dried up before release thanks to the embarrassing Masterclass trailer. Not only was the teaser poorly written and narrated, the line make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on prom night single-handedly obliterated any interest in the project. And then there's the game itself. Honestly, it's hard to understand where the funding went due to Mighty Number no. 9's unimaginative mechanics, tiresome gameplay, and by-the-numbers level design. But Mighty Number no. 9 wasn't just awful, it was also terribly mismanaged. Kickstarter rewards didn't work, the project was heavily delayed, and several ports were canned, which ended up being kind of a blessing. Looking back, it's hard to believe that the man behind such a beloved franchise screwed up this project so badly. Number 7, Bomberman Act Zero. During the 1990s, Bomberman fever was everywhere, with Hudson Soft pumping out legitimately five games a year at one point, revolving around the adorable Bomb Fanatic. But when it became painfully obvious that the company was just repackaging and re-releasing the same game over and over, the developers knew something drastic had to be done. With that in mind, the creators forged a reboot in 2006 called Bomberman Act Zero, which replaced the cutesy style with a dark and gritty aesthetic. Was it a ballsy move? Well, absolutely. Was it a good idea? No, not at all. Due to the third person perspective and realistic design, players couldn't tell Act Zero was a Bomberman game if not for the title. However, Act Zero's edgy look is not its worst feature. This reboot suffers from appalling collision detection, unbalanced AI, unbearable loading screens, and grimy artwork. The main campaign is a bore fest from beginning to end since every level is identical. For some inexplicable reason, the game doesn't have a save option, meaning players are expected to drudge through 100 levels in one go. Although Bomberman hasn't had a massive hit since, none of the later entries have been as dreadful as this atrocity. Number 6, Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness. Despite the fact that Lara Croft seemingly met her end in Tomb Raider The Last Revelation, Core Design weren't ready to call it quits on their most lucrative property. Several years later, the badass archaeologist returned in Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness, which in its
itself was three years after the forced anthology approach of Tomb Raider Chronicles. Since this was Lara's debut on the PlayStation 2, fans were excited to see how the treasure hunting, jungle exploring series would play on Sony's new system. Angel of Darkness was meant to mark Lara Croft's glorious return, but it ended up soiling the franchise's reputation. Performing the simplest tasks was a chore due to the dated controls, an inconsistent camera, poor combat, and incessant bugs. Also, the frame rate dipped with such regularity it felt like a deliberate feature. Now, this isn't to suggest that Angel of Darkness isn't without merit. When it comes to atmosphere, voice acting, graphics, and the score, this entry gets top marks. But considering the game fails in basic departments like moving or climbing platforms, the bad far outweighs the good. Luckily, Tomb Raider found its footing when it was rebooted again in 2013. If it wasn't for this successful revival, Lara Croft could have stayed buried figuratively and literally. Number 5. Ukulele Gamers were worried when key players from Rare went their separate ways, believing it would spell the end of certain Rare franchises, especially Banjo-Kazooie. It was all the more disappointing since the last Banjo game, Nuts and Bolts, ended the Bear and Bird's adventures on quite a downer. So when the former Rare employee set up a new company called Playtonic Games, things started looking hopeful again. After the developers announced a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie called Ukulele, it felt like all prayers were about to be answered. With limited resources, Playtonic had to set up a Kickstarter with an initial goal of £175,000. The company was overwhelmed with support, receiving over 10 times their proposed budget. With over 2 million quid in the bank, it looked like Ukulele had more than enough to be a hit. And the final result was... Okay. By no means terrible, Ukulele didn't come close to matching its predecessors. Even though the puzzles and platforming sections were fun, Ukulele felt like it relied on nostalgia rather than forging its own path. Sure, it sold decently and spawned a spin-off, but Ukulele failed to reignite interest in the former Rare developer's work the way that it should have. Number 4. Bionic Commando Nearing the end of the 2000s, Capcom thought it was time to have another crack at one of their most cherished franchises, Bionic Commando. There was an enhanced port of the original released in 2008, but the following year saw the release of a major revamp tailored to resurrect the series. Rather than churning out another run-and-gun platformer, Capcom and Grin went all out, forging a beautifully rendered world, an in-depth story, a neat combat system, and complex grapple-hook mechanics. The protagonist, Nathan Spencer, who had previously been depicted as a macho cheeseball, was fleshed out with an intricate and tragic backstory, but as ambitious as the project was, it failed to come together in any meaningful way. Bionic Commando was so generically forgettable, the main takeaway is the ridiculous revelation that Spencer's mechanical arm harbours the soul of his wife. Yes, it didn't make sense then, and it still doesn't make sense now. After receiving lukewarm reviews and flopping hard, all plans to continue with turning Bionic Commando into a dark, gritty saga were abandoned. With the series staying dormant for over a decade now, it's very possible that Bionic Commando is dead for good this time. Number 3, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 Despite the fact that Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 were met with a fair amount of praise, their exclusivity on the Dreamcast hurts overall sales. And when the mixed format Sonic Heroes received mixed reviews, Sega realised their wisecracking mascot didn't have the same grip on the gaming industry that he once did. To get back on track then, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 was intended to reinvigorate the franchise, allowing the furry speedster to get back on top. Based on epic trailers and a solid demo, this reboot looked like the chili dog loving hero had a chance of becoming Mario's rival once more. But Sega's hopes and dreams didn't pan out since Sonic Six turned out way worse than anyone could have imagined. Due to buggy gameplay, painful loading times, abysmal controls and boring levels, Sonic 06 is considered one of the worst entries in the franchise. It's still sold decently, but most believe that this game is directly responsible for tainting Sonic the Hedgehog's name, and they'd be right. Number 2 Shenmue 3 Considering Shenmue pioneered quick time events, open worlds and other mechanics, it's apparent the Japanese-oriented brawler was ahead of its time. But since the project cost an outrageous amount and was a dream cast exclusive, making a profit was unfeasible. When Shenmue 2 also bombed, director Yu Suzuki's potential franchise seemingly fizzled away. Both installments may have financially failed, but the admiration for Shenmue grew with time, causing them to develop a cult following. Realising there was still a deep love for his creation, Suzuki organised a Kickstarter campaign for a third game in 2015. Amazingly, Shenmue 3 became the fastest crowdfunded project to reach $1 million and the first Kickstarter game to raise over $6 million. It 
It ended up raising $20 million in the end, surpassing its original goal tenfold. It looked like the fanbase would be lining up in the streets to get their hands on this long-awaited sequel. Which is why it's depressing to learn that Shenmue 3 was a major bomb. In fact, it failed to outsell 2018's remaster of the original. Worst of all, this highly anticipated installment just wasn't very good. Although its predecessors pushed the boundary, Shenmue 3 was more of the same, making it come across as dated and unimaginative. And number one, Duke Nukem Forever. Although the first two Duke Nukem games sold adequately, its third outing was a monster hit, selling 3.5 million units. After the alien busting outlaw reached a new level of popularity, fans eagerly awaited a follow-up. And wow, did they wait. Duke Nukem Forever was originally set for release in 1998. After countless delays, the long-awaited sequel came out in 2011, earning the Guinness World Record for longest time a video game spent in development. But Forever's development didn't just take forever, it was also unnecessarily expensive. Due to licensing fees, discarded content, having the project restarted repeatedly, running out of cash and being bought out by another company, Duke Nukem's fourth outing ended up costing at least $30 million. Though it was impossible for Forever to meet expectations, fans were still excited to witness Duke Nukem's return, especially after he took an unintentional hiatus for 14 years. But when the cigar-chomping hero finally burst onto the scene, it was obvious the game wasn't worth any of the wait. Despite spending an eternity to develop, Duke Nukem Forever felt rushed. Due to shoddy graphics, excessive platforming, primitive AI, dated pop culture references, and buggy gameplay. With all that money and time at its disposal, it's impressive how badly Duke Nukem eviscerated its own legacy in one foul swoop. And hey, speaking of video game disappointments, it's not like we've run out of those. There were plenty in this year alone. Click the video on screen now for the 10 most disappointing AAA video games of 2023. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment down below. Head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Sci for What Culture, and have a good week.